Okay, diving on in to the next one here. This is another Schwein deck. So Schwein here, he levels up when you've dealt a total of 12 non-combat damage in a game. Notable that he does not need to see you deal that damage. So he starts meeting his requirement while he's still in your deck. When he levels up, whenever you deal non-combat damage to the enemy Nexus, he stuns the strongest enemy in the back row. And when he Nexus hits the opponent's Nexus, he deals three to additional to the Nexus and three to all of their units. His champion spell is Ravenous Flock here, which is actually a card that we're playing copies of in the deck as well. Very reasonable card for finishing off stunned or damaged units. And then our second... Yep, strongest equals highest attack. And explicitly, it stuns the highest attack that's not already stunned. So if you've already hit their Nexus once and you hit it again, you stun the next highest thing. Sejuani here says he levels... Or she... I think Sejuani is female. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Sejuani here uh, levels up when, she dam when you've damaged the enemy Nexus in five different rounds. She's also a pseudo-removal spell... Because when you play her, she gives an enemy Frostbite and Vulnerable. So Vulnerable makes it so you can force it to block something on your side of the board. And Frostbite sets its power to zero. So she often comes into play and she makes something blocked and kills it. Lindsay Deck, incoming in your submissions. Do you upload all Rune Terror decks? Yes, yep, everything everything ends up on YouTube. Magic, Rune Terror, otherwise cut up deck by deck. And there's actually a Rune Terror page on my website as well that has a playlist on it with everything that I've played there. Uh, her level up, once she levels up, says play, gives the enemy Frostbite and Vulnerable still. And this is really powerful. The first time I see you damage the enemy Nexus each round, Frostbite all enemies. Just... An incredibly powerful effect basically says wipe out all the attack on the enemy units when you poke their nexus. So having things that can damage their nexus on their turn basically lets you fog their attacks, which is really good. And on your own turns when you're attacking, the ordering of your combat really matters when Sajani's leveled up because if your first unit or second unit hits their nexus, all of their subsequent blockers get their power reduced to zero. And again, her uh, her champion spell here is Fury of the North, which is just a very reasonable combat trick. Give something plus four, plus four as burst. Uh, the rest of this is some combat tricks, some reasonable... Some reasonable minions here, whatever we call them. Got some removal spells. Some Ember Maidens. Ember Maiden, that's sick. Round start, deal one to everything. That's real good against the burn decks. Probably the elusive deck too. Plunder, get an empty mana gem. Does that mean this ramps me? That seems real good, huh? How do champion spells work? For people that are new... That's sweet. For people that are new to um, Rune Terra, the way champion spells work are when you have a when you have a champion in play and you draw another copy of that champion. You already had one in your hand. The second champion in your hand turns into the champion spell, and then if the champion in play dies, the champion spell turns back into the champion itself. So it's basically. It's basically like ensuring you never have two of a legendary with one of them being dead in your hand. Uh, but it looks to be playing an aggro deck. This sand seems fine against aggro. Maybe Ruthless Raider's not ideal, but it still trades early and it has tough. I think I'm going to keep this. If we can transfusion to power this up, tough will be extra good. You got it from Steve. Thanks for the brand new Prime support. I really appreciate it. Welcome to Hoaglandia. I'm going to lead on Crimson Disciple here. Because I think there's a good chance they play a blocker. And if they play a two or three power blocker, I can't attack in with this. Or if they play a two power blocker, I could still hit them with Crimson Disciple. Okay, that, uh, this actually makes this play worse. Can't attack in now. Could have, could have attacked in with this. Feels bad, man. 
I assume they're going to open attacks and smack me for four here. You know what's cool about Rentero? When someone asks how much does it cost to own every card, you give the number... Yeah! Yeah, just like... The fact that, like, people can be like, okay, what does it cost to build the deck? And I can just see, like, okay, you can go here and look at this and know. Instead of being like, well, it kind of costs about this much mana, this much dollars, but you don't really know, and it's an upper ceiling, and, like, yeah. That's not great. My survive damage, create a crimson unit in your hand. Okay, I think I'm gonna lead on Ruthless Raider here to bank another spell mana. Because I kind of want to wait to play Crimson Curator till when I have transfusion mana up so I can protect it from removal or poke it to get a thing. Dream title update. Yep, yeah, thank you. Swain said mid-range, and what was the other one we're playing after this? It's, uh, Tempo, Tempo, Sedgemus. Yes, the music in this level is much calmer. This is an accurate, accurate Hello, summary. Dear. What have you got us into now? <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be discovering cards talking to each other in this game for like an incredibly long time the fact that the cards have like characters like actually interact with each other makes it feel a lot more alive all the crimson units talk to each other and they're great and every almost every champion has voice lines for other champions yep If a card seems like they have synergy in their effects, they also probably talk to each other. Nice. Uh, so... I think I'm actually just gonna pass here and not attack. I think I'm probably the control deck in this matchup. And if I attack, they're gonna get a chance to play stuff. And I'd rather just pass and drain their mana. I'm not sure if they timed out there. I think, yeah, it looks like, looks like our opponent might be disconnected, which is unfortunate. Vision to see what others cannot. What do we name our second Twitch baby? Thank you for the very generous tier to resub Najo Mage, and thanks for the year and a half. The decision is the first of many weaknesses. That's unfortunate. <laughs> How many times does their thing have to go all the way down before they before they DC? This is like the fourth time. It must be more than three, because that's happened a bunch. It takes more if they've played any cards at all. Weird. They have two transfusions here. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they're distracted or if they like disconnected. This game's available on mobile. So like maybe, maybe they lost mobile internet. Yeah, I'm glad you're liking it, Boston. I have, it's, it's really well done. It's really, really well done.
Could I have killed them if I would have done it to this twice? Probably. Hey, we did anyways. Hey, so it's great. History will remember. The timer in this game is definitely aggressive. I don't fault people for taking time to make decisions, but like when they're disconnecting, making no things, they're either disconnected or roping one of the two. And like I said, the, fa the fact that this game's available on mobile makes the chance that people are just like genuinely disconnecting more likely because like mobile internet connections aren't always the most stable. Hey, thanks, Distraction Ninja. I appreciate the support. Ash Sejuani. I'm mulligan these two and look for some more units. Transfusion I'm going to go hold on to since I've got the tough unit here. They played Diablo or any other ARPG growing up? Yeah. Played a ton of both Diablo 1 and Diablo 2 as a child. Because what are, what are M readings, really? Yeah, yeah, that's true, too. Real life just pops up more on mobile. I think that's a accurate assessment. Fight or die. You're more likely to be playing in a place where you can get disrupted. You know, it's, it's funny. I've mentioned a couple of times that my kids, my kids watch a lot of Minecraft on Amazon and Jake actually just got done watching through Minecraft Dungeon. Does anybody know if that's available on, is Minecraft Dungeons available on the Switch? I should look into that because Jake was really into it. He watched the whole, whole video all the way through. It is. Hey, I might have to get that to play with him. Gonna act like it's an air airport and announce my departure. Have a good stream and I'll catch the VODs on YouTube. Thanks for the biddy, Scissor. I appreciate it. Sweet. The game is really entertaining and I'm 29. Yeah, I might, uh, I might have to pick that up. Jake watched all of it. The Winter's Claw. It's Minecraft Diablo 2. Yeah, it looks like it. You didn't get me into They're gonna love Paper Mario. This might be a little bit too aggressive use of this. Does, does anybody know, does the does the Dungeons mod on Minecraft allow you to play two people on the same Switch? Like, can we both play on the same physical unit? I guess we have two Switches and could crossplay, technically. It was right on my tail! It does? Sweet. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out. I assume we're gonna get attacked here. You gotta believe me! I think I'm blocking here and finishing this with this. Can't you always split swing co-op on the switch? Usually. Uh, we have, we have, uh, we buy physical cartridges for most of our Switch stuff. It was, it was actually really funny. So, 
Jake's been watching a lot of, but they've both been watching a lot of people play Minecraft. And the other day I was sitting down here while he was playing it and he started narrating his plays. Like he loaded the level up and he was like, and today everyone, we're going to build a city. And I just like lost my mind. He was so adorable. Am I playing Swain here? I feel like I am. Yeah, streamer, streamer ready, exactly. Tra train him up to take over the family biz. That's unfortunate. Ancient things trapped in the ice. Mother will unite us all. Wow, that's uh feeling kinda dead, chat. Feeling feeling kinda dead. I guess I'm at 16 and could take a hit here. In Avarosa's name. I can like block this. And I can culling strike this and go down to 10. But we're still pretty far behind on board and we're still two turns off of getting the Leviathan down. Let's get a good look at you. I guess next turn I get to deploy Sejuani. Uh uh, oh honey. <laughs> Fight the signal fires. Yeah, I suppose Sejuani's gonna get to kill their 5 5 here, right? So I got that going for me. Carved from the savage cold. I don't get Rintier yet. Is it always best of one or best of three? It's best of one. I think as someone who's a staunch proponent of best of three in Magic though, I think it's important to articulate that Rune Terra as best of one is much more enjoyable in my opinion than Magic as best of one because Rune Terra has way less variance in it than Magic and way more player agency. There isn't a resource system in Rune Terra where I randomly stumble and die or flood and die. And knowing what champions my opponents are playing means that I get to make educated mulliganing decisions in the one game that I have. I'm gonna go ahead and transfusion here. Maybe this is wrong because these trade, but I feel like keeping their board small here is important. With these with these Leviathans in hand, I feel like if I can just survive, I'm likely to win. That's a touch unfortunate. Is that all? Because this is no longer going to be frostbitten here when it pops back up. Patience. Yes, Runeterra also has fewer narrow answers slash questions that require sideboarding. I agree with that assessment. I need just a moment. I think we're dead, huh? You are in the right to very, very, very dead. Yeah, Sejuani, Sejuani's still really far off from me here. What did we catch? I don't let him smack me. I'll do it myself. I'll cut them apart. Face me. Yeah, Le Leviathan, very powerful, but eight mana is not, not a small amount of mana. It takes a lot, a lot to get set up. Seeing, seeing there kind of how slow that is catching up with us a little bit, getting caught with two of them in our hand.
New to the stream, I don't follow magic, but enjoying watching your turn. I'm glad you're playing. Thanks, Jack. I appreciate both the feedback and you being here. I am planning to make Runeterra part of my regular schedule moving forward. Apparently, opponent had somewhere to go. You can always find my schedule on my website here, although until I get back from paternity leave when that starts, it's going to be a little bit little bit more sporadic. Usually, usually I post my schedule a week out or more. But with uncertainty with impending child, it's going to be going to be a little bit less planned than I usually am. Although it's nice, it's nice to know that we have like a there's a final date we'll she'll be here by. They are Kali, Kalista, and Elsie here. So almost assuredly an aggressive deck, probably Tempo Endure. I think I keep Transfusion and Crimson Curator. Mulligan these, hoping to find a two mana, two mana troop. Perfect. That's a great pickup as well. Pull the strings. Yeah, yeah, we scheduled we scheduled to be induced for Monday if she doesn't come naturally before then. Monday. Monday is like 39 and a half weeks. Skitter out from the darkness. Is it crazy? I I think I'm gonna block here because I get to eat this for free. And then I could either culling strike the Elise down the line or trade with it in combat. I like you update. Please take care of you and yours. You have my support. Thanks, Engineer. I appreciate it. Mr. Payne, thanks for the sub gifties. I'm just gonna Crimson Curator here. I found my family, my bloodkin. <laughs> I want to say that your candor and communication in your update video is wonderful, and I plan to continue to support you as a creator. Have some gifted stuff. Thanks, Payne. I wasn't, I wasn't really sure how the community was going to react to that update vid, and so far it's been positive. So clear. Hopefully, maybe wizards will take a lesson and learn that clear communication is ideal. This can't block, so this attack seems fine. I'm fine with this trade here at this point. This trade probably means that, uh... This trade probably means they have another release. Hey, Ellie. Thanks for the support. As long as I get my preview timeouts, I'll show up. Of course. Of course you get your preview timeouts. I I haven't cow, but like I don't know. It's just it's just all so abhorrent. Like she's gonna be so happy. Do I just take two here? If I block, not only do they get a 4-4, but this turns into a 3-3. Three, three. I think I just bank my mana into spell mana with what my hand looks like now, and then I open on attacks next turn. It's nothing personal. Sure, yeah, and then there's that, right? Like, even if it was somehow a setup, a setup, police. Protesters find out if police will push 75-year-old man over. They do. Like, it doesn't, like, it's still not okay regardless. There's nothing to fear. Red Mage Frank, thanks for the five months. One, it's not okay regardless. Two, it's disgusting to imply that it's a setup. Oh, Leviathan. There are so... 
You are you are so much mana, Leviathan. Thanks for the five gifts. Did I say five months? Thank you, Red Mage Frank. Words? What are words, chat? I think I'm gonna transfusion here. Just so I don't lose a mana. Sick. Love to see it. I can't wait. Are they playing with this deck a bunch? I think three by Leviathan's way. Yeah, I believe that dude light. Let's we'll trim one after this match. <laughs> you had them all together, it's technically five months. It is, isn't it? We need a chain whirler. We did just get done playing Twisted Fate. Started playing or interior yesterday after checking out some of your YouTube vids and went 7 0 in my first expedition. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I think the limited's a great way to learn the cards. And I, I actually really like the limited mode in this game. It might be something we play on occasion here. I had I had fun with it. Thanks, Brain. But I'm rich. Can I just do this and get value out of them? Is this silly? Like, I get another unit? Like, they get some things, but, like, I have some removal spells? Do we hate this? I kind of like this. Like, I can't just keep taking hits here, right? I guess I could take hits for one more turn. I'm gonna take a hit for one more turn. Because these, these can't block... So, like, I can do this, Culling Strike the Elise, and then open on attacks next turn. No, our removal does not hit the 4-4s, unfortunately. The fact that Limited Mode funnels you into Synergistic decks makes it feel Constructed Light, which is a nice change of play pace from Play Your Random 3-3s three for 3. Yeah, I completely agree, Haskow. Completely agree. What is in their hand they just keep passing? Honestly, it might be right to just pass back here and go to my turn and burn a couple of mana when they passed here. The The priority system in this game is so excellent with the, the back and forth and the decision where sometimes it's right to just do nothing. Do I want to save this? I think I do. I get to do two to them as well here. Again, that excellent back and forth that this game has. And now, hopefully, they're dead when we open attacks next turn. So again, if I start by attacking, they don't get a chance to deploy more blockers here. They just they just have a three three as a blocker. Hey, Blixt, I'm glad you're enjoying it. 14 months, welcome back. Yeah, yeah, people, people who have been free to... The members of Oaklandia who have been free to playing it have said they've been happy with the free to play. Alright, let's cut the, let's cut the third Leviathan, huh? What are we adding a copy of? Can I go up a transfusion? This card seems pretty absurd. It's good with Crimson Disciple, Ruthless Raider, and Curator. This seems like seems like I, I always I always hate playing against this card. I'm always happy to draw it. Let's do let's do that.
They are... Fiora Garin. <clears throat> Is this probably a hard matchup? Well, I guess she has three power, so I'll kill something with three power. Man, these here. flipping Leviathans, chat. They are just, they are just determined to be in our opening hand. What's the difference between ally and follower? Good question. So, ally refers to followers and champions, whereas... Um, follower means just follower. It's usually just a mid-range deck. Okay, so it's not the all-in protect- It's not the protect the queen deck. Their deck is basically crawl. Okay. Everyone bleeds for the right prize. They would fall by my blade. Raise the banner, lift our spirits. Come, Clara, we have much to teach you. I can't wait. Come, Clara, we have oh, much best. to teach you. Transfusion, just looking excellent again here. Strider Stone, thanks for the two months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I'm summoned, deal one to all other allies. That's actually pretty okay. I'll think about it. Fine. If they want to trade here, last breath, create a random elite. I think that's fine. Right. And then I'm not going to play this. So I don't have plunder, so we'll just bank the spell mana for now. Great pickup. We never sparred, Fiora. The outcome was obvious. Fight or die. Fall to our standard. So, yes, there are a ton of cards that interact with each other in this game. Most of the heroes interact with each other. And, um, and other random cards that are, like, faction-related. All the Crimson units interact with each other, yeah. Demacia will prevail. Switch blockers and elixir. Oh! Oh yeah, you're right, I could have done that. I don't care change. It's really well done, Mr. Payne. All of the all of the audio and visuals in this game are just fantastically well done. The Vanguard stand is one! Sucks to give up a couple of mana here, but. Don't have anything to do. Right out. I never hold back. Oh God. So again, when I mouse over the eye here, it tells me if combat resolves like this, I'm gonna take five and Fiona's Fiona's gonna die. Dwight, this game gives me... I don't remember, Dwight, did you play Hex when we played Hex back in the day? Because this game gives me serious Hex vibes in a good way. Counter and strike. 
played a lot of Hex. Yeah, I thought I thought you played you played Hex with us. Yeah. Um This this game compared to Arena feels like how how Hex compared to Magic Online. Because like obviously this software is so, a lot better than the Hex software was. But like compared to Arena, I feel like that parallel is really good. And this game's way more battery friendly than Hearthstone. Yeah, I'd believe that. Show them what we're made of. Oh sweet, this is gonna level Swain up next turn, right? So this will deal three. Artillery barrage. Huh? Do I just play the other Leviathan out here? No, I play this because next turn he'll stun all their stuff, right? General. Why have we never sparred, Fiora? The outcome was obvious. So, Swain's leveled up form says, whenever you sh deal non-combat damage to the enemy nexus, stun the strongest back row enemy. So when this hits their nexus three times next turn, it's going to stun their three strongest things here. Ella Gag. Thanks for thanks for the two months. I appreciate that. And Oblong Ogsby, thanks for the half a year. Yeah, and I mean like, I don't think it's really accurate to call taking a break from magic brave. I am I'm I'll take the compliment, I guess, but in I'm only taking a break from magic because I felt like if I was making magic content, it would be bad, so I'd rather just take a break and make no content rather than bad content. Yeah, Flock. Flock here is real good. Get Flocked, Fiora. So this will deal four to her, removing her barrier, and then these will trade. Oh yeah, we were guaranteed Flock off the Leviathan. Artillery barrage. Lead on Noxus. So this their entire board gets stunned here, and then we get to open attacks and kill them? Pretty, pretty good! Pretty good. Press on. History will remember us. So Leviathan been clunky a little bit in the set, but really getting to see some of the strength of it there, what it's able to put together when we pair it with Swain. But is is a powerful piece of top end worth playing. It's just playing three of them is probably too many. Something, something we haven't talked about on stream yet today. And actually, you know, it's funny. Um, so they're they're playing burn here with Teemo most likely. So I'm gonna mulligan this and keep all my cheap guards. It's it's almost hard to talk about things not related to this game while playing it because this game has so many meaningful decisions in it. Like, it's hard to keep side conversations going because I feel like I have to constantly be talking about what I'm doing and what decisions I have to make. And that's, that's just for the record, that's a very good thing. So this dude, every time he hits me, he puts mushrooms in my deck, and when I draw the mushrooms, I take damage. He attaches, more specifically, he attaches puff caps to my cards. Yes, yeah, that too. The turn timers are more aggressive in this game, which is also good, because it forces people not to just sit and wait. Death doesn't scare me. This game really needs a Tefri so we can have more idle chat. <laughs> no! Advent. 
Come here, handsome. Hello, dear. What have you got us into now? <laughs> I, their voice lines when they talk to each other are different depending on which one you play first or second, too. Dear, what have you got us into now? Remember the objectives. These two are very good together. It's nothing personal. This attack might be bad. Maybe I shouldn't offer this trade. This thing's gonna level up next turn when it puts more puff caps into our deck. This is definitely a game where we need to try and race. First big mission. Come, Clara, we have much to teach you. I can't wait. We're still forever away from Don't mind me. <laughs> these things happening. I want to stop by and offer my support. Glad you're doing something that makes you happy. Good luck with the family member. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate that. Yeah, and like I said, people people often ask me, like, Jeff, do you think games, like, whenever a new game comes out, people are always like, Jeff, do you think the game has staying power? Does it have, you know, long-term the ability to, to have, you know, last, basically, in the market? And that's just tough to know, right? Like, R Riot has laid out a good game plan that seems like it will make the game have a lot of replayability. And if they hit their set release deadlines, I think the game has a lot of potential, but it's hard to know if they're actually gonna hit those deadlines or not. So we we'll have to kind of wait and see. Here's to celebrate one year with you. Thanks for thanks for the entire year, Cryogenics. I appreciate you sticking around. Let's get you a sword for while you're here. Might get burned out here. So we're going down to four. Puff caps. Puff caps could kill us here. <laughs> Backfired. Uh, Swain is nowhere near leveling up, unfortunately. We could, we could also just die to these cards here. All right, I have seven mana. I think, I think I'm just like, I think I'm just kill. You want me to hook Teemo? No, I think I just try and kill them, right? I think I, I think I death sand this and then Wolf Rider and attack with everything. Just like hope they don't have anything meaningful out. I need, I need to end the game this turn. Sejuani so has Overwhelm. I guess that's fair. Overwhelm, is that lethal then if they have nothing? They would Overwhelm for three. They block here. They die. That's worse than this, though. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this. This also has Overwhelm. Oh, and it's also a six. Yeah. Yeah, this is bigger. This is the line. Am I dead? Yeah, I'm just dead. Okay. Okay. I think, I, I think I'm happy with my playback game. Needed needed to fade. Needed to fade either a mystic shot there or a mushroom. And then we were able to kill them. But it's close. So this is Johnny Swain deck. Uh, I think I'm full mulliganing here. Looking for some more proactive cards. Well, 
Is this the exact same hand, or are we one card different? We, we had this in the original, right? The Winter's Claw strikes! Hey, Kronal. Yeah, for Druid Chara stuff, we've been doing non-sub mode. It's been pretty okay. Which is a uh, refreshing change of pace. Everyone bleeds for the right prize. Just gonna kill this now before they get value out of it. But my friend. Yeah, they seem they seem to Riot seems to really understand that you should want people to play your game as much as possible, as opposed to limiting them. It was right on my tail. I have the name. I need the reputation. I don't think it's strictly just the magic community. I've I've definitely done my fair share to rile people up in the magic community. And I think people that I've riled up are still going to happen into my stream on occasion just because I'm good at making content. And if I'm not streaming magic, they're not gonna happen into my stream. I also think I have slightly a slightly lower viewer count here and it's not uncommon for just large Twitch chats in general to be kind of toxic. That's an excellent draw here, because we're going to have the uh, attack token here, and we'll get to uh, hook this and kill it. Pain is nothing. However, I also think there's aspects of magic that make the community toxic that just can't be present in this game. For example, a lot of... A lot of the... What's the word I'm searching for? A lot of the toxicity that comes from magic, not only is it related to resource variance, but honestly, the finance aspect of magic is just god-awful. And people, people love that aspect of the game and get upset when you say things like, it's awful. There are a lot of people that use magic as a stock market that's unregulated. I also think that's true. People people who are like, I'm sure there's some people in here that just like found the stream today through watching it on the Rune Terra section on Twitch, but there's definitely other people in chat who like are my viewers for magic and people that are willing to watch me on other games are probably a lot less likely to be toxic. Burn them. Destruction feeds my heart's fire. Fine. All right, so I've got transfusion here. I think I'm gonna do this, this, and transfusion this onto this here. Hey, Ars Crimhorn, thanks for the brand new prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome. That's sure too. And I, I actually think, and I'm not sure. I'm sure this will annoy people, but I actually think Magic's reputation as being a highly skill-based game is largely unwarranted. I think while there's certainly skill to leverage in magic, it has an incredible amount of variance. Much, much more than most card games that are that are created today. I think I wanna save this. No, yeah, there's no input lag in this game like on Arena. Alright. Fair. Fair. Are we just like Leviathan Go?
The amount of skill required to play optimally is extremely high. I I would actually argue, and this is part of this is part of the thing. This is part of the problem with modern magic design. A lot of the in-game decisions in magic, that's what we talk when I talk about things like player agency. I feel like I feel like a lot of Magic's modern designs have removed a lot of the in-game player agency from the game. In a way that's not pleasant. Is it crazy to attack with this? This isn't leveling up anytime soon. I guess I probably don't want to trade it for this. Like, I probably don't want to lose three off of here. I guess this is going to level it up pretty quickly, right? I mean, look at... Look at how many tournaments Brad Nelson plays in. Yeah, like, Magic's a game where, like, the best players are only winning 60% of the time or so, right? None of their things have hooks. They could still play more stuff out. I think I want to deploy at least one more blocker here. This is burst. Let's start with this and see what we get. Rival the War Mothers. Hear that, Bristle? Varg offers a challenge. Eyes blazing, brightest torches. Yeah, yeah, mul mulliganing and how you sideboard is the largest portion of player agency in magic, in my opinion, in modern designs. The actual, yeah, the actual, yeah. and actually, the, to talk about what Rune Terra does well. Rune Terra avoids design pitfalls that magic has Look with things there. like spell mana. The fact that spell mana makes it so you're not punished for not spending your mana on certain turns means that Rune Terra doesn't have the issue where the optimal play is generally spending all of your mana each turn. I'm gonna bank this into spell mana for now. Dark in the sky. Okay, always having plunder is great. The fruits of conquest. By my hand. Yes, mana efficiency can be... I agree with that. Mana efficiency can be important, but it's often long-term efficiency. Attack. For each other attacking ally, deal one damage to it. You have an ally that survives six attacks. Attack. For each other attacking ally, deal one damage to it and drain one from the enemy nexus. Interesting. I mean, this also levels up, Swain. Strength through suffering. Kneel before me. Vlad also gains Ritter. Yep, that's what that icon means. Lead for Noxus. Empire above all. I will break them. Okay, so like, we are about. Hey, Dirty Digits, you're fine. You're fine. Right you keeping me around. The Leviathan is about to just beat them up incredibly next turn, right? Do I play this out as a blocker? I think I do. Try to understand. I matter, you don't. Oh, Artillery barrage! The winter's claw endures. Such little lies. So we get to stun their stuff every turn. We get to frostbite their stuff every turn. I'm really, I'm really glad we got to have 
some games where we showed off the Leviathan doing its thing. It was, it was super clunky early on, but getting, getting to see it really, really punch the clock and go to work there is strong. Lux Karma. So they're a control deck, and I actually think this hand's probably a good keep here. We're the beatdown against control, I think, so having an aggressive start like this sounds great. Can you switch game, the board next game to show off some of the new music? Yeah, yeah, for people that came in that didn't hear the pirate shanties earlier, we can definitely put the pirate board on for the next match. I'll try anyone. My turn. Uh, I don't have the 8-bit game board. I have uh, this one, and I have the Sea Shanties board, and I have the default one. The days of streaming music behind us. It looks like we're heading that way. We actually hadn't talked about that today, but I tw I tweeted out a clip from a company that talked about apparently there is a group of people funded by a music label that they track channels on Twitch and have the ability to issue live DCMA takedowns for people that are streaming music live. And they said they haven't started doing that yet, but they have the capacity to do it. And I'm I'm honestly surprised it took this long for that to happen. I'm going to open on attacks here. Again, if I play this pre-combat, I could attack with it, but I don't want to give them the chance to deploy blockers before I hit them here. So if I attack first, they can't play blockers. And this dies, they get a 3-4. Been playing this out. Let the flames take you. <laughs> yep. Guides me. Yeah, the, the people that have been acting like they've been put out in some way because they suddenly have to stop breaking the law is, uh, Advent. Advent. Is, is certainly something. Hello, dear. What have you got us into now? You will be scoured from this land. So this is tough. So I could block with him plus death sand to kill this. It's probably worthwhile. Yeah, we could see a legal avenue open up for people to uh You think I should elixir this turn and then kill it next turn? That's an interesting thought. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Sure. And again, like, people have talked about how there's bad faith actors who are abusing the DCMA system. And that's definitely true. There are definitely bad actors that are abusing the system to their advantage. 
but those bad actors don't randomly excuse the fact that there are a bunch of people who are just blatantly breaking the law and are going to get rightful DCMA strikes that they deserve. The sun is shining. We should too. Everyone bleeds for the ride. There are a lot of content creators on Twitch, even large ones, who have been abusing the system for too long, stealing other people's content. Yes, I say that's also. I agree with that. It's also factual in every system created by man. This impact, yeah, I mean, it technically impacts everyone. You're not supposed to be broadcasting stuff you don't have the rights to anywhere. Do I play this because it levels up? I think so. The winter's claw endures. You own what you take. Ah, uh, sure. This game has cutscenes? Yep. Yeah, when your champions level up, there's cutscenes. This game's great. I will play my part. Yeah, Ziggs, the the they're they're on a whole nother level. The the production, like, Arena is such a big step up from Magic Online. It's very easy to forget that Arena is still light years behind real video games. And like, it's this is very clearly a card game made by a company that makes video games in a in a good way pain is nothing thanks for the support ziggs can people safely stream the new tony hawk remake and all of its licensed music that you would probably need a lawyer to figure out and examine the eula of the product and what it permits so most mod, again, I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice, but as someone who tends to read the things he agrees to, most limit. modern video games in their user agreement that most people click through, most modern video games um, provide explicit permission in their user agreement to stream the game. And I'm sure the legality of games that have real music in them, that the laws are probably behind there. And that I wouldn't be surprised if they need work. But, you know, growing pains in a new system. I don't, I don't think the fact that there's growing pains in the system should be an excuse for... People get to just do whatever they want, basically, which is what we have now. A beacon through the dark. Like I think I think it's worth pointing out that, hey, these things have issues and we should address them. But the solution in the meantime shouldn't be, okay, people can stream whatever they want, even if it's not theirs. It's really good, Tadio. It's really good. The biggest, the racist statues getting torn down and tipped over all over the world right now. It's just like such a fantastic outcome of everything that's going on in addition to everything else. Hey, Retro Phrenology, thank you for the brand new Prime support. Welcome to Hoglandia. Jeff's alignment is LG Lawful Grumpy. I feel like that's accurate. I feel like I identify as that. We get to get Leviathan down next turn, which draws uh, our leveled up Schwain. Face me, I watched the update. I like that you're going the way that is correct for you. Personally, I don't enjoy non-magic games as much, but 
I, but you make games I don't enjoy entertaining anyways. We'll continue to pop in and definitely continue to support. Thanks, Arcane. I appreciate it. And like I said, I'm not, like I tried to make pretty clear in the update, I'm not quitting magic by any means. I just like need to take a step back. Seems like, seems like a good reason, good excuse to do that for now. Prepare the cargo! I, I do not think people should be streaming music they don't have permission to stream. And again, like, stealing people's music is so commonplace on Twitch that people just think it's okay. It is actually, as someone who, again, reads the contracts that he signs, as someone who reads the contracts that he signs, um, it is against your Twitch partner agreement to stream music you don't own. People, people are breaking the contract they've signed when they do that. We might die here. Yeah, that recall is really good. That being said, if we don't die this turn, we're in a pretty okay spot. They get to final spark this into here and put us to 14. I can block here and then I take eight. So we're not quite dead on board. Uh, probably, Crunchy. If you if you haven't already, Crunchy, I'd recommend before offering me dollars, posting in the subs discord in the modern channel. There's always folks chatting in there that I'm sure would be happy to help as well. Did you give a short explanation to the mana and turn systems in this game? Uh, yeah. Basically, the way the turn systems in this game work is every turn, each player gains a mana and restores their mana to full and draws a card no and the thing that di the thing that differentiates my turn from their turn is who's attacking so sometimes they're attacking sometimes i'm attacking fine fine don't want to block with this because I don't want to die. But my friend. Yeah, the attack token feature is really elegant. This game, in my opinion, has the best play draw balance of any card game I have ever played. It is very, very well done. We'll give this vulnerable. If they don't interact with this, we'll be able to uh, smack her, which is nice. Vulnerable means I can force their thing to block. Getting to kill my Leviathan here is a tough beat. Alright, this only gives plus two, so can't save it. Beacon through the dark! Lux has a barrier on her, so even though I can force her to block, it won't accomplish anything here. I think I think I'm just playing out. I guess I could play this out as a five-five. I guess another thing I highlighted people talking about the resource system. You'll note I have two extra mana here. Something this game allows you to do is carry mana over in between turns. The barrier's one turn, so I'm just not gonna attack. Yeah, yeah, when when the, when the beam kills a unit, it actually lines it up and blasts it into your nexus. Whereas here, when this isn't actually killing my thing, it's just going to shoot it directly. Again, just like those little details on the animations are just so incredibly well done. What is gained when you return malevolence? Yeah, their their Lux is is giving us a run for our money. Not not having a way to trigger our things to hit their nexus has been rough here. 
This is elusive, so it just gets to hit me. What's Swain's alternative spell? He turns into a, a flock, which lets me kill something that's damaged. But it's not super useful here. I'm having a hard time triggering this. I honestly I think I'm just trading these. I'm trading this off here. Like, I can't just take this hit. And this is tough, so it takes one less damage, so I can't trade five fives. Hey, thanks for the 13 months, Murky. Yeah, I could Schwain and flock it, but I think I don't want to use my other my flock that way. Glory, courage, excuses for war. Justice will be served. I guess my sequencing here is bad. I should have played this before Swain. Because now I dealt the damage to my thing. Well, Swain, Swain's already flipped. The order rewards its faithful. We feast tonight, Varg. Maul them! I've got two elusive units out now. It's too late for you. Super happy to trade these. Bastards. They're going back up to 20 here. Boards are shrinking down a little bit at least. Need to draw something relevant next turn. I think I put this here and chump here, and then we can flock to kill her. We're going down to five, though. Howdy, Ravens. Oaklandia open will be. Not as of yet. I plan to schedule the next open after, um, I plan to schedule the next open after, after the baby gets here. Uh, you can see the deck on the screen via the overlay. Well, poop. Can someone on mobile who knows how extension works? Does the extension really not work on mobile? That seems like it should be easy to do all the magic ones work on mobile. It doesn't. All right. This is not the end. We'll have to, have to pass that feedback along. You previously mentioned that the next Hooch is going to have an entry fee. Would this be an addition to the subscription department? It would be dope, right? So it effectively effectively be a sub plus five dollars, I think is what we're gonna end up doing. With adding additional price support that's still pretty flat. Uh 
Not quite level 8. Ember, Ember Maiden's been a little underwhelming. She makes our sequencing pretty awkward by killing our by killing our stuff. Like she has some synergy with the crimson cards, but I feel like she put me into awkward positions. What's a card? What's a card that someone was saying that we could draw cards with? I'm summoned, draw a unit with five plus power. I guess that's kind of card advantage. It always, it always finds your boat. That's interesting. Oh, it finds Sajani too. Yeah, I kind of like that. It finds it finds I, I, one of these. I have never played League of Legends before. Ooh. The deck. I think, I think the deck editor in this game is probably its worst feature. A little, little bit clunky, but still, still functional. You would cut a shared spoils. Yeah, it seems fine. This filters through our deck as well. Shared. Shared spoils isn't technically card advantage. It just adds consistency by finding your creatures faster. We're going to change the slaughter docs, we said, right? Change the, change the game board. So Johnny and Vladimir, it's another deck that's kind of slow. I'm going to bend the Leviathan here still. Hey, Ezio, thanks for the very generous tip. I appreciate that. I saw your YouTube video, and I personally like your style of talking and teaching others to become better players. Here's the donation to show support for your content. As always, to watch after a long week. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're on the docks if we both get to the ship. Rough, I know. Fight or die. Is there any merit to keeping boat versus slower deck to make sure we draw it? We're gonna see so many cards by turn eight. I think it's right to bottom the boat. I'm gonna use my death sand to kill this. This has tough, so it takes one less damage. This will do one total. Holy Kynan, thanks for the thanks for the five months. Oh, B Walk, thank you. All 
I will bookmark that and update it later. Well, that didn't quite work out. I sub from War of the Spark to Theros, but I didn't play Magic, and I'll continue to sub while you don't. I really do hope Magic becomes something that you and others can enjoy again. I'll watch the stream in the background, probably not interact as much. Thanks, Moldy. I appreciate you keeping me around. Unfortunately, this can't cut through to trigger our Overwhelm cards. You're probably just playing Crimson Curator. Actually, maybe I play Crimson Disciple because I wouldn't mind trading this for their 3 1. Gotcha. This card seems pretty good too. Enrage Yeti's a 1 mana 5 5, and like you get to a card your top 3 cards pretty quickly. a big boy, chat. Edvin, come here, handsome. Hello, dear. What have you got us into now? In my experience, it reads top one card when the opponent plays it. Will no one listen? Poor man's gone mad. Thanks, Ironclad. Good to have you here. Feeling like we're dead here? That's actually not a bad pickup. Okay. Well, let's see what kind of tricks they have, huh? Carved from the savage cold. Took the Yeti here. No mercy. Words to die by. Well, Spider Man beams all around, right? We we still have a six seven in play here, so like with our combat tricks, we might be okay. Should I have taken the free attack on the 5-5? Five five? Oh! Yeah, in my in my head, only this could could hook this, but you're right, it was vulnerable. I could have dealt. I missed dealing three points of damage to this. Hear that bristle? Varg offers a challenge. What's theirs is ours! All right, are they gonna attack now that I don't have a trick available? Probably not. My six seven is pretty good. Feel like we're okay on this board at the moment. Who would dance with me? Okay. Where can I find a full body? Show them our teeth. Rip their flesh! Come here, darling. Should I kill their Vlad? Leave no survivors. The calm before the storm. Getting, getting punished here for not doing the three free points of damage on this last turn. Uh, 
They're all gonna have one left life because of the land trigger. Are they? Deal one to it. Oh, okay, I got you. I understand. I am Lord and Master. Heed my words. Bastards. Is that all? Ah! I can't tell if that combat was good or bad for us. Oh, I can't wait. The trap is set. Uh, Sejuani's spell is the this fury in the north here. Yep, yeah, exclamation point RT decks will get you the deck list. There's also an extension on screen that'll let you get there. We're still pretty far behind, right? Because they're they can open attacks here now. I've dressed for the occasion. In yeah, that's lethal. You're just dead to open attacks. That's not true. I was at six, or we were not dead to open attacks. Can, you, can people explain? People are saying I'm dead to attacks. They had a five and a three, and the three did not have overwhelm. Yeah, we would have we would have been at one. So you you trade your Sejuani for the three one. Okay, I just I think I wasn't missing something. I was like I don't think we're dead to open attacks. We would have gone to one and been in a mediocre spot, but we were not dead to open attacks. The three one doesn't have overwhelm. Oh, it totally does. You're right. Okay, I take that back. Take that back. We were dead. I don't know. This one felt a little bit medium. I feel like... I feel like once we got Sejuani or Swain active, it didn't feel like we had enough ways to trigger them. Like the, for example, the other, the Twisted Shodani deck we just got done playing, it has Warning Shot and things that make Warning Shot in the deck that make triggering your plunder effects basically easier. And this deck, when, when we got the Leviathan set up, it was really good, but... The Leviathan basically being our only tool for using either of these once we flip them felt like it wasn't quite enough. And I don't I don't like I said, I'm still learning the card pool, so I'm not I'm not sure what exactly you could do, if anything, in these colors, but that would that would be the problem I would be interested in solving if I wanted to work on this shell, was figuring out if there's something that's not just Leviathan that can trigger these things once they're flipped. People, people think the next next deck we're going to play is just a better version of this. All right, sweet. So I'm interested to try it. So we're actually going to try a different... We're on a... We're on, we're, it's basically Sajani Day. 
Oh, do we play Twisted Swain? I think I just showed you Twisted Shroudy. That was Twisted Swain. We're gonna play... We're gonna play a Tempo deck up next that's still playing Sojani as a champion, but it's being paired with Misfortune here. And this deck has some of those cards I just talked about, like Warning Shot and stuff. I'm gonna hit a quick ad roll while I get the deck list uploaded to my thing and tweet out the deck that we're playing. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere.